Hi, this is Anthe. Um, I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, memories and um, like what is real or hallucinated kind of thing. It's to do with bipolar um, mania and processing with PTSD. I um, had extreme difficulty remembering anything in mania, like even for two seconds. So what I tended to do was take photos of everything. And everything seemed very um, symbolic to me. And so I took like thousands of photos. And um, they're basically on my old laptop, which is very worn out. And um, sometimes... At least if I took the photo, I could allow myself to forget it because my brain was basically overloaded with so much information. So um, it meant that I knew that if I needed to, I could go back and look at some photos, um, which is dredging through all the thousands of photos. <laughs> um, so I had a, um, a recollection of... Um, being outside the library... Um, when I was manic, yet still, I was on meds, but still manic, and I was uh, very fragile as well, and I had just been to um, a book signing by a local author that I went to school with, and I bought three children's books, so I've never read them, but I bought them two years ago, and they've been signed, so... Flying Food Balls Unmasked, the, gate, the Great Kiwi ABC book. I bought it partly because of the pictures and the symbolism and the pictures that I saw. And the Lucky, the Lucky book. So, never read them, but they kind of stood out to me. And I've got in here, to Xanthi, made you look, made you stare, made you wet your underwear, Donovan Bixley. <laughs> So, and there's a find me to e in every picture. So at the time, that was kind of symbolic to me and um, to buy these children's books. And um, when he spoke, he said that he draws the pictures first and then comes up with the story. And I thought, that's what I do. Like, my paintings are all symbolic to me. And then uh, they've helped me simplify the thousands of things in my head to come up with the main themes or storyline. So I'm writing a novel at the moment, um, which I'm currently up to about the sixth draft. But anyway, after that, I went, uh, I had my camera with me and I wasn't able to drive at that time because I was um, not able to focus um, well enough to drive. So I walked across um, to wait for my ride and there's a children's playground and I took photos of the shadows of the children, like they were climbing on a big, um, one of those netting type things and I felt really overcome with emotion um, taking the shadows of the children playing because I miss my son and then... Um, um, yeah, I've told you that he's over overseas and he's in Australia and I'm in New Zealand. So, um, anyway, I went, I saw these stumps um, with different heights. So I decided to climb the stumps to the top, took a photo of my feet, and then I heard a little voice behind me, a little girl. What are you doing? turned around and she's standing on a stump directly behind me and I took a photo of our shadows um, and our shadows it made the stumps look like we were on a level um, now um, then she just vanished like I thought oh she must be a good runner there was no one around like parents or anything she must have been five or six years old with brown hair and she, um, yeah, she seemed curious on what I was doing and then disappeared. So I um, was reminded of this memory yesterday and 
I wasn't sure if I had hallucinated her, because sometimes uh, people with bipolar um, hallucinate during episodes, um, or whether she was real. I mean, she looked like a real girl to me, but because she vanished so quick, it was like one minute she's here, one minute, next minute she's gone, you know? Uh, but then I could have just gone into a trance and, you know, zoned out and t lost time or whatever, you know, that's what happens with me as well. So I decided to look up on my computer to my old laptop, which struggles because it's really old. I've put stickers all over it and um, try and find these photos. Uh, felt quite emotional looking at some of the photos. But anyway, I found it. I found... Um, I, I had a, a memory that I was wearing a purple scarf and yet sure enough there was a photo of me a photo of my feet, my boots, my blue boots purple scarf and I was wearing um, yeah there was, I could see what other clothing I was wearing and standing on the top the top of a stump but like the top of a mountain kind of thing I think is what it symbolised to me and then there was a photo of uh, the shadows of me and the little girl and yeah, it looked like the stumps were leaper when our shadows were kind of distorted. But she was standing on the stump directly next to me. So she must have been real. <laughs> um, and then another another time um, I was taking photographs and I go into like this magical state. It feels like everything's, there's like a trance and everything's magic and everything's symbolic. And I, I, um, I saw these little dolphins in a garden and a little owl and things. So they knocked on the door and asked if I could take photos of their garden because it seemed magical to me. So they let me and showed off their dolphin collection. <laughs> they had a lot, a, a lot of dolphin ornaments. And the cat's name was Toffee. And I had just written down in my journal, Toffee. So, so that's why I thought I could see the future because of the things that I would think or do just before something else happens so yeah that was interesting so as I came out of taking photos of all these symbolic things in the garden uh, yeah these two children came up to me they must have been aged about eight years old um, and they said what are you doing you know they were very curious you know taking photos of something in the tree or something on the ground or whatever <laughs> in my own little world and I said oh, I'm just taking some photos and yeah, so I had doubts to myself, like, were those children real or did I hallucinate them? So they must, uh, I'm 95% sure those children were real. But what, what is interesting to me is the children, uh, when I'm in that state, did not laugh at me um, for being imaginative with the things I took photos of. They were curious, whereas I do have recollections of... Um, if I take a picture of a sign or something, and adults, I do remember adults laughing at me, and um, they, I also got scolded for taking photos, because um, I took photos of things in shops, I'm allowed to do that now as a merchandiser by the way, but um, anyway, um, yeah I got told off, no, I'm not allowed to do that, but then a few um, kind people, um, there was a particular couple owned a, a local dairy they asked me why I was taking photos and I, I told them it was symbolic in my head but it was too hard for me to under, to explain um, you know what I kind of meant by it and they said go right ahead and um, it was really nice you know I took photos of the the meaningful words on the advertising or something to do with a picture um, so yeah, um, I guess that's mainly what I was trying to say. I mean, if I if I were to look through this book, some of the simple like things are on just about every single page. So I bought it mainly for the pictures. Uh, the rainbow very simple up to me. Uh, the bee, the apple, the cat, the kiwi. Uh, what else? Um, the, the banana, the beach, the cat again, um, the corn is one I thought of today uh, when I saw some photos, uh, the dance, the eggs, 
the ear. So pretty much everything, uh, the fantail, everything in there, the pictures are all, all very symbolic to me. Uh, yeah, the, the jelly. One, one of the dairies I went into, um, they were a little bit suspicious. Like, why are you taking photos of things? And I said, I, I, I said to them, I was on meds by this stage, but I was still very fragile and I was still manic. I said, because they symbolic things. And then they sort of said, oh, okay then. And then they looked at me funny. When I got up to the packets of jelly, I took a photo and burst into tears and ran out of the store because it just reminded me of my son because that was one of his favorite, favorite foods. Um, the lighthouse. The more pork. The mountains. So I see symbolism uh, as too complicated to explain to you what all of these complex things mean to me. Um, the complexity behind them, I mean. Um, so there's, there's the netball, there's the nest. The ocean, um, but in my mind, they're linked to like thousands of things. So, the power I've been talking to you about the power shells, and I just bought a power egg too. I'll show you. So, I had um, this is a, a very recent purchase. So, this is an egg made out of fragments of power shell. So it's broken, all these pieces, and I've, I've called it treasure. And then what happened is um, one of my Facebook friends made a little um, thing about junk being treasures. And so like I've got a couple of power shells out there, I've got a couple of old bottles, I showed you some of my treasures, I made my treasures out of old junk and old wants kind of thing. <laughs> and um, yeah, so I, I did call this treasure before she did that. Um, so yeah, that's that's kind of how my brain worked, just linking together. Uh, so the rainbow, so the rainbow and the rain, very symbolic to me, and that's what some of my story is. The queen. Uh, snow. Tui. The waterfall and the volcano. In the walker. There's actually a walker in here. That's a walker. So that's like a Maori um, canoe. And then the title of this being like unmasked, I thought it was significant as well as the cats. The I haven't, uh, I haven't actually read it, I've just flicked through at some of the pictures in it. And it says, oh, too zenthy, I hope this is perfect, Donovan Bixley. And I've written the date now of it so that if I have to look the photos up again, I remember what date it was. Uh, this one, the lucky book, it's got, I, when I flick through it this morning, it says, what's wrong with this underwater scene? And it's got a pitch for a rainbow under the sea. So, yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. Um, there's a message in a bottle and like, my little fairy bottles I made. Um, they've actually all got little colourful messages in them. Those little bits of ribbon and beads and broken jewellery are actually messages. So... Yeah, cool. Bye.